and uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do this video for a couple months now, and uh, I figured fuck it, now is as good a time as any. Um, I want to fanboy out a little bit. Um, I spent a good chunk of my years listening to music trying to decide definitively who my favorite band is. Um, I've loved so many bands. And uh, a lot of them have really spoken to me and really hit me deep down. But uh, in the middle of last year, I started re-listening to something that I've, I've been listening to for a couple years at this point. But um, just really dove in and listened to them non-fucking-stop. And um, I got everything that they have put out physically. Uh, vinyl wise anyway um, but uh, I just want to talk about it uh, I can now definitively say that I know who my all time favorite band is because they the emotion and the overall vibe of this band is just astronomical It's they're fucking insane and uh, through tragedy this band persevered and they rose out of the ashes of one band, changed their vibe, changed their sound, and they've become something different altogether. Um, different, well, maybe not different, it's the, the difference is the wrong word. But um, the band I'm talking about is Early Graves. And um, they are the, the band that hits home for me right now. And they have for the last couple months. Uh, they're playing in the background. We'll get to that album in a minute. But um, if you don't know Early Graves, uh, they are a... How do you explain Early Graves to someone? They're a metal band. <laughs> uh, elements of thrash, a lot of elements of hardcore, some death metal, crust. They throw it all in there and they just they fucking destroy. Um, they started in San Francisco in 2007. Um, formerly they were known as Apiary, but uh, Apiary was more of a grind, uh, math core band, and when they started shifting their sound, they changed their name to Early Graves. And that was in 2007. In 2008, they released their first album under the moniker Early Graves. That album is We the Guillot Guillotine. I'm going to say guillotine. There's a fucking glare on that side. So we're going to this side. We the Guillotine. This album hits home for me in a lot of ways. Uh, Matt Daniels, the vocalist of Early Graves, his voice is so angst ridden, so emotional, so harsh, but he enunciates so well and he just puts it all on the fucking table. Um, I cannot pick out a favorite track on here. Um, I do love number seven, The Man in Black Flood Across the Desert, uh, Borrow Teeth, Borrow Claws, City of Angels. This is a fucking monster of an album. Um, this is not an uh, original press. This is a 2013 um, repress on Pure Hell Records, the band's own label. Um, but this originally came out in 2008. And, uh, yeah, it's a fucking barn burner. Um, it doesn't come on an insert or anything, but it, it does come on probably my favorite variant I have of any record. Look how fucking gorgeous that is. Gold and blue with white splatter. Man. Uh, perfectly matches the, uh, album artwork. But yeah, I love this fucking album. This was the first album I heard by Early Graves. Um, I didn't hear it until um, a couple years after it was released. Um, but uh, yeah. This fucking album. Early Graves, We the Guillotine. Um, if you know anything about Early Graves, you know what happened shortly after the band released their second album. Um, in June of 2010, the band released their album, Goner. 
which is playing in the background. This is a uh, 2011 refresh on Southern Lord. Uh, gorgeous layout that I'll get to in a minute. Band released this in June of 2010. In August of 2010, August 2nd, Mac Daniels was killed in a van accident. And the band was on tour with uh, fellow Californian band, uh, The Funeral Pyre. I showed one of their albums a couple of days ago. Um, they were on tour together and there was an accident and Mac lost his life. It was horribly, horrible, was devastating. Um, I remember reading about it while I was prepping to start my website, American Aftermath, which started in September of 2010. I remember one of the first banners I had had an image of Mac, Mac screaming into his microphone. Uh, I had just discovered the band and they lost their vocalist. Not only their vocalist, their heart, their soul. Mac was way more than just a vocalist. He was, he still is, he's just a fucking brilliant mind. Um, yeah. But, um, a couple years passed and the band decided to continue on and we'll get to that in a minute, but first I'll show you a little bit of layout of this or the graves goner um love the artwork on this fucking record always have really drew me in first time i heard it um gorgeous fucking gatefold uh southern lord so it's fucking heavy duty cardboard just their sleeve doesn't want to go back in like i said this has been playing since the video started Nice lyric sheet. Um, this does feature voc uh, guest vocals by uh, John, the singer of the Funeral Pyre, because the bands were very close. But uh, my favorite part of this, and since this is a repress, it does say, Thank you, Mac Daniels, rest in peace. Um, I can't imagine what the band went through. I can't imagine what they're still going through because uh, losing someone as forward and as you, you can't replace Mac Daniels and the band knows that and their singer they currently have John from the Funeral Pirate is not in any way trying to replace Mac um, he's a one of a kind and uh, he was fucking brilliant or the Grave Genre. Um, so that was 2010. And uh, after a few years, like I said, the band decided to uh, push on. And um, we get Red Horse. Um, at this point, the band uh, brought uh, the Fear of Power singer, John Strachan, into the band on vocals. And yes, it changed the vibe of the band. Because John and Mac had completely different vocal styles. John is more of a black metal vocalist. But it doesn't make the music less powerful. If anything, it just changed the vibe of the album. Um, it made it dark. It made it relentless. And uh, I think that's what you need in an early grave album. The artwork on this is gorgeous. This came out on No Sleep Records in two, uh, 2013. 2012 and um, like I said it's different but it's super raw super powerful and a phenomenal fucking album um, the one two three four five six seventh track on here it's called Pure Hell uh, it's the name of the band's own label it is a motto by Mac Daniels it was uh, painted on the back of his denim jacket that he always wore um, it is a featured tattoo for me in memory of Mac. Um, yeah, like I said, very different album, but a super strong album. Uh, I love this fucking album. And, uh, yeah. Again, nice insert here. 
lyrics. And uh, I really love this variant also. Um, I plan on getting the, all the variants for uh, We the Guillotine and Red Horse because there's still a couple. You'll be able to see the uh, kind of smokiness of that. The, yeah. Really fucking good. And uh, since 2012, the band's been kind of quiet. Uh, they released a split with Ringworm, which I have right here in my hand. And uh, from this, uh, Ringworm had a song that would come off of their album that came out shortly after this, uh, Snake Church, uh, that track is Innocent Blood, and Ringworm covered Iron Fist by Motorhead, which is fucking dope with uh, Ringworm doing it. Uh, Early Graves did a new song called Revenge, and they covered Celtic Frost into the Crypts of Rage. Rags. Rays. It's in Old English. I don't read it very well. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this is the only material we got from Early Graves in those couple years. Um, the band is still active, as far as I know. Uh... I really hope we get some new material from them soon because I would hate to see this band kind of just go away. Um, the records are some black. Nothing really crazy about the labels or anything. Creator Destructive Records. Uh, Goner's also on black. But um, yeah. It took me a long time to realize and come to terms with the fact that I've known my favorite band all along and I just, it was, it just wasn't clear to me. But, um, if you're not familiar with Early Graves and you like thrash and hardcore and crust, check them out. At the very least, find a song, stream something. Um... I thought about wearing my early grave shirt in this video, but I thought that might be a little bit of overkill. Um, I did pull this out of my stack of old decibel magazines. This is the September 2010 issue, which I believe came out in August. And uh, the reason I pulled it out is because there's a column in here called Streetwise San Francisco, which has probably one of the last images, I'm guessing, of Mac. And there's a short little interview with him and a couple other guys in the band. Um, yeah, this probably would have came out right after, right before the accident. I think Decibel releases them, uh, a month in, a month in advance of the actual date. There's Mac there. From the taco shop. Um, just pick through records. Uh, yeah, so I don't really get go through my uh, decibels anymore, but uh, I had to pull this one out just for the simple fact of the feature with uh, Early Graves. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for this one. Um, yeah, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thank you for supporting. Uh, I've been Ross. This is on the record. Thanks.